Welcome to Coffee with a Googler. In this episode, I'm gonna be chatting with Justin Quimby, who's a PM on the Tango platform. If you're not familiar with Tango, it's all about augmented reality. And this guy gets to work with the partners that are building really cool, crazy augmented reality concepts. And he's gonna come tell us all about them. So Justin, you're a uh, product manager here at Google working on Tango. Can you tell us all about it and tell us about yourself? I actually joined the team uh, about a year ago, and it's been really exciting because I worked in the video game industry prior to that. Oh, cool. I spent uh, 15 years actually making video games. I worked on Dungeons and Dragons Online and Lord of the Rings Online at oh, Turbine wow. back in Boston. I know, and, <laughs> and, and then on top of that, I actually, what brought me out to California was to work at Electronic Arts okay. on Spore with Will Wright. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. And I got to then, I did a whole series of small startups, many of them buzzword. Buzzworthy wordy. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> mobile, social, HTML5, free-to-play games. Wow. But for me, after doing games for both PC and then mobile titles, mm -hmm. I started looking around and I said, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. And I started looking at VR and I'd been a huge fan of VR ever since the 80s. And, and I started thinking about, well, VR is great, but what about augmented reality? I had seen little snippets of what right. Johnny Lee had been working on in the game development community, and I said, all right, I want to go work at Google with Johnny Lee and work on the team for Tango. Cool. And so that's led me here today to be a senior product manager working on Tango, helping build the third-party developer ecosystem okay. for the Tango platform and Google's larger AR platform. So, nice. Yeah. So, so what's involved in building the partner ecosystem? It's really fun. You get to go out and talk to a lot of people but part of it is about explaining what is augmented reality and what is smartphone augmented reality. Right. And also I get to have the fun job of telling people, hey, it's not just a theoretical lab project, it's actually shipping. So we've got the, the Lenovo Fab2 Pro, which is the first Tango-enabled smartphone shipping this year. And it's the first of many phones that are gonna be coming out with the technology. And so it's a really exciting opportunity for developers to start creating apps and games that take advantage of all the additional capabilities that Tango brings to a smartphone. And I think it's interesting from the developer perspective because it's like not everybody has these phones yet, but if you start building now, then you can get to define the category. And yeah. you know, when I think about it, you're right, because it's like when when app stores and play stores first came out, there weren't that many apps. And the first app that did you know, photo filters and to enhance your photos, that kind of thing, that got to define a category, that got to be huge. Yeah. And so like for developers now, it's almost like, don't blink or you might miss the opportunity, right? Yeah, and the other thing that's great is that there is a burgeoning set of tools mm -hmm. with Unity and Unreal and other 3D engines to enable developers to create 3D applications for Tango-enabled smartphones right. very, very easily. So you don't have to build your own graphics engine. You don't have to build your own particle systems. You don't yes. have to build X, Y, and Z. You know, Think about all the logging and metric systems, <laughs> all the analytics tools that yeah. we have today. Mm -hmm. Those didn't really exist in a mature form when Android first came on the scene. Right. And so developers at that point were really throwing darts, trying to figure out what features people liked, what they didn't. Whereas today, you can study that on day one. Sure. There are well-established beta channel systems. Yep. All those mechanisms and tools to help build great apps. Yeah. And it really is up to the developers. And this is, you know, here's a present. Here is a present, developers, of knowing where your device is as it moves through space and time, and the ability to put digital objects in the real world and pin them to the physical world. What could you do with that? Is that putting a miniature wrestler on the table and having him wrestle? Has somebody done that? Oh yes, we in fact have a developer, <laughs> Adai, that's making an app, Hollow, which okay. is all about taking augmented reality photos. It's all about taking hollow photos. So, okay. you, know, think, you know, think about the hollow chess from right. Star Wars. Right? right, where suddenly there's a table that has all these things moving around. We can start doing that kind of stuff with okay. Tango today. The field is wide open for developers. Nice. What is their idea? And with Unity Unreal, it is very quick to take an idea from, a, from that, from a pure idea to a working prototype. You must have worked with some really cool and fun and crazy scenarios. That, can you share any of them? Oh yeah, so I think part of the fun is when you can put digital objects in the in the real world, suddenly that means, well, if I want to take a photo of you, mm -hmm. you can, it, it just, you know, you're having a photo here, that's great. But what if I can insert, you know, a 
suddenly I've got 15 little wrestlers from various sizes <laughs> all posing behind you. Augmented reality means that not only can you insert digital objects into the real world, but you can also replace objects from the real world with digital ones. Right. So suddenly you could put an artificial green screen here. And okay. so you and I, as opposed to having coffee, coffee here, we might be having coffee at this table on a beach. Right. That sounds pretty good to me. Can we do that? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe not coffee if we're on the beach. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Margaritas on the beach. We, we need to get new mugs, though. <laughs> when you have developers thinking about what kind of crazy stuff could they bring from the digital world into the right. real world, you start thinking about well, a picture frame doesn't actually have to have real world information in it. Now, suddenly, mm -hmm. this picture frame could have my rolling Twitch stream. One of the great uses, and I admit my bias coming from the games industry, is that third-person God-style interaction games mm -hmm. are great with Tango because you can place a digital world okay. on a tabletop and suddenly it interact with it in an entirely different fashion because you're not constrained to a flat screen. Right. And the small screen. And a small screen. screen. Right. Yeah. Now this becomes your magic window into this digital world projected into the real one. And so suddenly now this could be a cityscape. Right. Uh, I could be putting down hundreds and hundreds of dominoes I don't know about you, when I was playing with dominoes when I was a kid, there was always yeah. a very small number and we could never yeah. have enough. Yep. Now suddenly there's an unlimited number of dominoes you could place. We've got a developer working with Mattel on a Hot Wheels game. And yeah, oh. it's really cool. Oh, cool. So you can actually lay out digital track okay. and then put your different cars, tweak and tune your cars and have them racing around the tracks, which is something as a kid, I always had my one little Hot Wheels car Right. And I tried to make tracks for it and you know, occasionally it was my never, dad, enough, it track, was never right? enough track. My dad yeah. would step on the car and break the axle. Maybe yep. my dog would knock over the little ramp I had built out of wooden blocks. Yep. Now suddenly you can do all of that yeah. with digital building blocks. And then you look through this like little yeah. window into your augmented world of Hot Wheels. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So if I'm to get started with all this, like, what's the best way to get started for you? The fastest way is to go to developers.google.com slash tango and there's, easy to remember. Yeah, easy to remember. And there's all sorts of information there. Whether you are a Unity or Unreal developer and you're familiar with those uh, right. platforms, or even if you're just a standard Android developer and you know Java, we've got a Java SDK you can get up and running in less than a day. We've got tons of sample applications. We've got sample code on GitHub. Uh, we've got active developer forums. And we're really excited to have new folks come to the platform and show us what's possible. Because that's one of the things that's fantastic right. is that someone working on an idea in a day or two can actually turn that idea that can be the that can be the seed of a massive business. Mm -hmm. There's a whole new set of categories yeah. out yeah. there that yeah. we haven't discovered yet, yeah. and it's really exciting because developers each know, have a different set of problems that they personally experience, their families, their communities. Right. We don't know every problem that will be solved by Tango, but we believe, and I strongly believe, mm -hmm. that it is an amazing technology to help take your smartphone to be a next generation smartphone. Right. And that then what are all the kind of crazy and awesome applications that developers are gonna come up with utilizing this technology yep. stack. So if the Tango smartphone is the next generation smartphone, there's a great opportunity for us to be next generation developers. Yeah, exactly. Thanks so much for coming. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's been a ton of fun. Appreciate it. So if you want to learn more, take a look at the description in this video, and we've put some great links in there. If you have any questions for me, or if you have any questions for Justin, just ask them below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.